Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining us again. We began this series on Monday entitled uh, Refuse to be Miserable. And the premise behind this teaching the week this week has been that you're just as happy as you choose to be, you're just as miserable as you ch choose to be, and it, it a whole has to do with what we choose to focus on. I think if you, if you don't learn anything else this week, learn this, whatever gets your attention gets you. If you focus on your burdens, then you're probably miserable. If you focus on your blessings, then, well, you'll probably be happy. If, you, if you see the, fl the, 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 the flowers on, on, on the stem, you'll be happy. If you see the uh, thorns on the stem and not the petals and the flowers, you'll probably be miserable. If you see the watermelon, you'll be happy. If you see the seeds in the watermelon, it all depends on what you focus on. And there's a whole lot of in our world, both good and bad, that you can focus on. Whatever gets your attention gets you. Now, here's another thing that makes a lot of people miserable, and that is uh, me-centered, self-centered living. Being me-centered. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but in the middle of the word sin is the letter I. So you spell sin, S-I-N, with an emphasis on I. In the middle of the word pride, P R. I-D-E is the letter I. Because usually when it comes to sin and pride, it's usually because we are thinking exclusively about ourselves. And no one is really happy if all you think about is yourself. James says in James chapter 3 and verse 16, these words, Forever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. So when you find people who are selfish and only thinking about themselves, well, there you will find disorder. And another word for disorder is misery. Do you know that, do you know why Adam lost paradise? Why he and Eve lost the Garden of Eden? God put them in paradise and said, I have only one prohibition. You can eat of all of the trees of the garden except the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And they became so obsessed with what they could not have that they minimized what they had. And you know what happened. They ate of the forbidden tree because they were trying to get it all. And in the process of trying to get it all, they lost it all. Listen, my brothers and sisters, we can lose it all when we become so me-centered and think that we have to have it all. One of the fast tracks towards misery is the type of person in which you're just wrapped up in yourself and caught up in yourself. You'll never be truly happy that way, being selfish. Two of the miracles that Jesus performed, one of the miracles Jesus performed was, the, in fact, it was the first miracle Jesus performed, was the miracle of turning water into wine. A couple uh, who was having a wedding celebration, they, the wine ran out, and Jesus was asked to do something about it, and he turned water into wine. Now, it's interesting that when he was tempted, Jesus was tempted in the wilderness by the devil, the devil said to Jesus, see these rocks that are on the ground. He says, turn rocks into bread. Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and was hungry. And the devil said, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus refused. But when that couple said, can you do something about the absence of wine? Jesus turned water into wine. Now, why is it that he would turn water into wine, but Jesus wouldn't turn stones into bread? Same thing. He's taking uh, some inanimate objects and he's converting them into a different use. What's the difference? Here's the difference. 
when he turned water into wine, he was doing it for someone else's benefit, for a couple who had a wedding feast and had run out of wine. But if had he turned stones into bread, he was doing it for himself. And Jesus is the type of person who lived his life, amen, for other people. Now, now to say that we should not be me-centered or self-centered does not mean that we should not love ourselves and we should not take care of ourselves. But if you live a life in which you have to be the center of attention and it's always about me and it's never about blessing other people, then you will be a miserable person. You'll be stuck with yourself, stuck by yourself, and nobody will want you but yourself. It's a paradox that sometimes the happiest people are the people who are trying to make other people happy, who are trying to bless other people. And in fact, during those times when you are really depressed, go find somebody, maybe who's homeless, cook a meal, find that homeless person and feed them. And as you're lifting someone else up, you will find yourself being lifted up. God has so constructed things that you will never be happy if all you're thinking about is yourself. Happiness comes when God blesses you and you become a channel of blessing to somebody else. You get the joy of being useful to somebody else. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says this, don't be selfish, don't try to impress others, be humble, thinking of others better than yourself. And then Ephesians Chapter 2 and verse 10 says this, It is God himself who has made us what we are and given us new lives from Christ Jesus. Long ages ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. Martin Luther King Jr. said the most urgent question is, in life is, what are you doing for others? And Paul says, again, in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, as we put it back on the screen, Ephesians 2 and verse 10, Paul says, uh, what, we are and give, what we are and given us new lives from Christ made us what we are, given us new lives from Christ Jesus, and long ages ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. And one of the ways that we become joyful is when we become useful, when we spend our lives helping others. What are you doing for other people? Someone said that the difference between heaven and hell is this, that when you die, and it's not, it's just a story, but when you die, you go into the next world where you have unbending elbows. So if your elbows can't bend, that means you can't put food in your mouth. If your elbows can't bend, you can't brush your teeth. If your elbows can't bend, you can't comb your hair. In hell, where they don't have bending elbows and everybody is selfish, they're fighting and knocking each other over because they're trying to feed themselves and they can't feed themselves because they're only thinking about themselves. That's hell and they're knocking each other's over. And that's why our world is in the shape it's in right now is because everybody uh, is selfish and only trying to feed themselves. But in heaven, it's like hell in the sense that the people in heaven also have unending, unbending elbows. But because they're not selfish, what they do is they say, I can't feed me, but you can. And uh, you can't feed yourself, but I can. So what they do is they pick up food and they feed the next person. And then the next person picks up food and they feed the other person who has un bending elbows. It's only when they're doing something for other people that it's reciprocated and something is being done for them. Because true happiness and rising above misery is making yourself useful. As Paul says, it is God himself who has made us what we are and has given us new lives from Christ Jesus. And long ages ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. And only when you're spending your life in trying to bless others, that it will come back to you and God will bless you. The most happy people, the happiest people, are the people who are the most useful people. So 
you, you look around, you'll find somebody you can bless. Might be somebody in your family, might be somebody in your community. You compliment somebody else. You live to encourage somebody else and see if it won't come back to you. And what will come back to you is the joy of the Lord, which becomes your strength. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We refuse to be miserable. Thank you for a blueprint on steps to be happy. Forgive us, Lord, for being self-centered and me-centered because in the middle of the word sin is the word I. In the middle of the word pride is the word I. Thank you for the example you've given us that why you would not turn stones into bread to help yourself, you would turn water into wine to help somebody else. And help us, oh God, to be a channel of blessings to somebody else. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us here again and with another powerful point to ponder. And if you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. It doesn't matter where you are around the world. You can still be a part of our e-campus. Everybody needs a church. So consider becoming a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church or get connected with some church. All right. Not only because it can benefit you, but you can benefit someone else. If you'd like to know more about St. Stephen Church, if you'd like to become a part of our church, please contact us at newstart at ssclive.org. Newstart at ssclive.org. God bless you. Thank you for being with us again uh, for another powerful point to ponder. And as we close, you know what the closing salutation is. And during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. I'll see you tomorrow.